Hey folks, so I'm here. So yesterday's trading pub was a complete write-off. Um, it's just, there was no sound. I think it's because I was using my phone re screen recording thing and it just wouldn't record anything when Zoom was. So I think it was a, an app confliction thing. So I've just got 80 minutes worth of silence uh, and some of the screen shares didn't work. So um, what I'm going to do is condense 80 minutes into well, as fast as possible to get all the salient points across. Um, so first of all, starting off with a very quick news shizzle. As you probably heard by now, Tornado Cash has been banned, sanctioned, and uh, basically uh, uh, being attacked by the US. Um, so they're, they're putting sanctions, on, well, basically this is the beginning of um, the US or the SEC or, or the the mainstream sort of financial world uh, is the, the beginning of the war against privacy coins. Obviously, they're going to attack them under the, the premise and the guise of, oh, yeah, we're trying to stop crim criminals. Um, but it's not just that. They just want full oversight in what everyone does with their money, and they want total control. Um, because when CBDCs are rolled out, um, they get full optics on everything you do with your digi dollar, digi pound, whatever. And so they don't want an escape route, and that's what things like uh, Monero, Zcash, and uh, Tornado Cash represent. So, but they, they've gone about it a lot heavier than I thought. So I thought they would just try and do the, the the typical banning, you know, like every country's banned Bitcoin, so to speak. But they've actually gone full out sanctions. So basically, anyone that's ever used Tornado Cash or any wallet that's ever been associated with it or interacted with that app, web app, um, you're on a list now. And depending on how much you've used it, uh, there are some people that have been basically not only their wallets frozen um, or put on a blacklist, but their um, people are getting their bank accounts deleted and um, their actual money in real life frozen so it's it's pretty brutal how they're going about uh, going about it so yeah all you need to do just tornado cash sanctions and there are there are loads of stuff now this is this is really bad because we do actually need uh, privacy coins or privacy protocols of some sort we really do need it um, not because you're you know you're a criminal etc but it's simply to you know you don't want to broadcast the world what you what you're doing what you've done so if you know let's say you're dealing with any ERC20 token or anything really um, let's say on MetaMask and you buy something you know an NFT on OpenSea or, or whatever the second you do that your public address is broadcasted to the whole world so if anyone wanted to have a little nose around your wallet they can see what's in it what you bought in the past what everything just like you wouldn't want anyone to have access and have a little look into your Barclays bank account it's the same this you know this end you wouldn't want yeah people to nose around your your personal affairs and it's the same with crypto so we do need stuff like these tornado tumblers um, so yeah that's that's a bit shit next thing biggest news in crypto for the last couple of years BlackRock one of the world's biggest head um, uh, money managers is now using Coinbase to offer Bitcoin or oh, spot Bitcoin um, investments to their clients. Now, the last time I checked, BlackRock has roughly 8.9 trillion. Trillion. That's not a billion. That's a trillion. So, uh, what is it? Eight. Okay. No, it's gone up. Oh, it's Q1. I don't know what Q2 is. But yeah. Okay. As a Q1, 9.57 trillion dollars uh, AUM. Uh, in fact, this one's probably going to be a bit more reliable. I, th I thought it was 8.9. Off the top, I dropped eleven percent. Okay, second quarter, yes, yeah, so eight point five trillion. Anyway, now most funds like BlackRock and, and Goldman and all these um, people that basically look after money for everyone else, they're all starting to see, even J.P. Morgan. Um, they're all now starting to recommend to their clients at least having you know one percent of your total net worth in crypto as part of your ultra high net, uh, ultra high risk pot. Well, you know, 1% of eight and a half trillion is is a lot of freaking money. That's what, $85 billion? <laughs> um, so this is absolutely huge that BlackRock is, you know, coming into the space and using Coinbase to be its custodial, um, institutional custodian. 
uh, and effectively broker. So that is absolutely solid, but don't, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go long right now. Um, next one, the girly test net merge that successfully went through. So that was the last test run basically uh, before the merge around the 16th of September. I think originally it was around the 19th, but I think they've moved it forward to the, the 16th of September for when Ether goes or Ethereum goes to, from proof of work to proof of stake. Now, for those you're not familiar with what's going on, if you just go to Siam Kid and then this one here, watch this. The yield is instantly going to double. Yeah, why well, I believe Ethel Moon. And th this will talk about all the things that are, you know, going to happen with Ether 2.0. You know. So definitely, definitely spend, yes, now of your time. It's definitely worth watching. So that's that. Um, what's going on here? Yes, that's that. Now, charts. Now, I have to give a warning here. Everything I'm saying... Um, is is not financial advice i'm not telling you to buy or sell i'm not just all i'm going to do is simply observe especially on i have to be very careful what i say about uh, regulated assets so like the us dollar and, and the s p 500 etc but i will start from the top um so the vix as you can see it is falling down this is a global um this is like the the global risk uh, indicator so to speak so typically the the you you'll see the vix spike on new you know, on you know contentious news announcements like you know we're, the world is going to war here's the covid spike etc and for as long as you you can go back basically the vix has always oscillated around in this green band sort of sub sub 20 sub 18 um, and then during times of war or craziness it spikes so yeah there are i mean if, if you wanted to get into the vix um, learn options and then you can just basically have rolling options to basically sit and roll over your your options whilst it's you know in the green and then you know take profit every time it hits the hits the red so you I mean hell you could you know you just say right I want to buy sub 20 and sell at 40 or, or 35 whatever you want so that's the VIX a lot of people do that um, I don't really look at, the, at that op, um, often. I just like to think what the general world is feeling. And at the moment, people are getting pretty much risk on. Um, and then we, then this always leads us to the dollar. Now, I have to stress, because pretty much every asset in the world is primarily priced in the dollar, and the dollar is the world reserve currency, if the dollar rallies, or so too does everything else. So, I mean, look at this, the absolute low of the dollar here is the 26th of February 2021. Well, what has happened to stocks since um, Feb 2021? Here we So typically, whenever the, the dollar goes down or up, um, stocks and crypto do the opposite, or stocks do the opposite, uh, and crypto has a roughly an 85% correlation to stocks, and so stocks and crypto do the opposite to this. So, for example, if you you know a lot of people have wondered why you know the market has you know crashed you know for for most of this year, well, let's just have a little look. Um, where's January? So if you look at, you know, basically from January 2022, it was all the way down here and the dollar has been rising. Well, when you have a rising dollar, guess what? Stocks fall. Hell, yeah. So literally, S&P 500 peaked out in January and started crashing ever since the dollar, obviously, started rallying. Now, what's happened in a more sort of recent period of time is... So we can actually work backwards a little bit. We had a big old spike down here in the dollar. Therefore, guess what? We had a big old spike up in in the in stocks, and not just stocks. As you can see, uh, Bitcoin also had a bit of a run up over here. So I I am 
constantly looking at the dollar. Now, when we look into sort of the, the lower time frames, there has been endless head and shoulders. We start off with a double top. Um, and what you'll find is that patterns make bigger patterns and they make bigger, bigger patterns. Um, and by the way, I've been calling this in my trading pubs for weeks now. Um, and, and they've played out like textbook. So we then had this head and shoulders neckline busted through, then made another head and shoulders. And I remember one trading pub a few weeks ago saying, hey, look, the textbook, the, the way you trade a, a head and shoulders, not once it's already fallen to the neckline, is you have to preempt the head. So you have to, oh my lord, I should have opened this up before. I'm going to pause the video and wait till Microsoft hurries the hell up. Okay, and back in the room. So basically, Google is always teaching you to, you know, hair, shoulder, head, shoulder. Hey, now it's head and shoulders, and you know, short it down here. But what invariably happens, and put your stop loss here. But you'll always get whipsawed like this, and so the market will just do this typically. So with the head and shoulders, you literally have to preempt it. So as it's forming, and you go, oh look, that could be. And when it's here, you can go, oh shit. If it even starts to come down a bit, then you go, all right, this is most likely going to be a right shoulder. I'm going to short the shit out of this stop loss around here, let's say. And then if you want, um, you take profit where all the liquidity is. So if everyone's going short over here, well, great. You, you know, you yeah, just start sell, selling here um, or as in buy. So close your, your order whilst everyone is selling and then wait for the inevitable pull, pull back, then short it again here and then you know it'll do its thing so that's basically how you trade head and shoulders properly not like Google has said now what we've basically seen is um, yeah the market is basically just fallen away and guess what it's created that right shoulder this in you know, another sort of head and shoulders created that whole right shoulder and now what we have in play is this shoulder head shoulder um, which is just crazy because Here's the the far the last one, the one which I'm sort of trying to see if it does happen because now we've got this sort of you know head and shoulders. What if it now comes down in, into this level over here? So let's draw this better, like that. If it now dives down over here, and then there's let's say this key support around sort of this level there if it literally dives into this any any major level that gets basically smashed into like that you have a high probability of a bounce and therefore the market could come back to a Kobo off this level and there's definitely a, a strong level there and therefore if that then happens then get, guess what we then have the world's biggest head and shoulders <laughs> for on the dollar then you have shoulder head shoulder neckline back down to this level um, so that's my only concern because if you basically what this means is that if the dollar does do this I'm not saying this with any high confidence or prob probability I'm just again I have to talk be very careful what I say about regulated assets um, I'm just saying it's something to it's a data sample or data point to put in your head um, and just go hmm interesting because if, if the dollar does crash down to these levels well or even this this level here that means stocks and crypto should rally. Um, yeah, interesting. Show me a chart and I'll tell you the news. Well, that you know, if that were to play out, the news would be you know, QE, <laughs> basically. Now, elephant in the room. What's this big red thing? Now, eighty, roughly ninety percent of all global crashes over the last couple hundred years um, have all happened in this red box so roughly late August to uh, late or mid November time that's pretty much where every crash happens um, and so uh, in a, a lot of my charts I got this red box um, so it's you don't yeah you don't really need to look at it for the dollar um, but it's interesting looking at it on the S&P 500 so we've had this this bear market relief rally um, and it's now basically attacking this level up here and this level up here sort of coincides with this big doom box over here so again regulated asset wouldn't it be interesting if it were to smash into this level 
maybe fake out a bit, and then go, hey, all the way back down here. That would be highly interesting. Um, and, you know, if, if that were to happen, sorry, let's go on to the daily chart here. If that were to happen, then all of a sudden, these sort of other support levels are all of a sudden very interesting. And this sort of picture over here, so just memorize this, just take a little snapshot for the wank bank, wank bank, um, ah, um, ah, <laughs> just, yeah, ignore, yeah, here, just take this picture here and then just go backwards in time. There we go. Big markets nearly always do the same things. Um, so what we're seeing is something very similar uh, playing out. So over here we had, let's squeeze this over a bit more. Yeah, basically uh, a falling consolidation pattern. Uh, and we pretty much had the same thing over here. So, you know, if if one was a betting man, I would, I would most likely say that where we are right now is pretty much where we were back in 2008, um, around sort of this relief rally, or maybe even this one. So, yeah, it's something to be aware of at the very least. What's going on here with my little lines? Um, and don't forget, the public nearly always haven't got a clue about market crashes until the the bottoming of it all. So here in 2008, we basically had half the crash whilst the public were blind uh, asleep at the wheel. Uh, and then this happened, and the po public woke up all you know down here. Um, it's the same you know same sh shizzle over over here really with with the tech bubble pop. So with the S and P five hundred right now, uh, again most people don't realise that there's been more money that's been wiped off the market from that top of drop there to bottom of drop there than the whole two thousand eight subprime mortgage collapse. So already this is the biggest crash in terms of money erasing uh, that we've ever had. Um, simply because there's more currency sloshing around. So that's that. Uh, again, some other assets uh, hitting their sort of resistance levels over here, which is going to be interesting. Again, the NASDAQ's doing the same thing. So the S&P 500 hasn't really caught up yet, whereas most others have. Um, the DAX, yeah, everything's getting... Yeah. And here's the thing you, you need to realize. You never get proper recoveries with V reversals like this. Whenever you see a V reversal like that, you need and, and, and the recovery is sort of a 45 degree incline, sort of in like like this. You need to always be wary um, that it's simply a relief rally. Um, so yeah, it's going to be rather interesting. So let's move on now quickly, and we're going to speed things up to Bitcoin. Now, obviously, I've already made some doodles from yesterday, um, but here's that same band. We have this this upper resistance level, which hasn't been hit yet. So, just like it's very similar to the S and P 500. In fact, let's just um, clear some of this shit up. Um, I'll leave that there. Actually, I'll be. I was using my fat finger on my phone, so may as well. Um, yeah, so again, with Bitcoin, now I can say what I want with Bitcoin. It's an unregulated asset for the moment. Um, yeah, we, we've got this this rising channel here. And by the way, a rising channel in a falling market is a, is a continuation signal so, pattern. So we will see further falling, but we don't know whether the falling will be from this level or this level or this level or, hell, up here or up here. Um, we will see a follow through, but... With a, with a rising channel like this, you don't know how, how long it can go. Sometimes it's very short, like here, like this one here. This one's being a, a fair bit longer. Um, but we have the red zone. And I would say that we have Siam's little white hole that needs to get filled around here. Um, so I think we could have a little move up. I mean, if we get above this 25,000 level right there, so basically where resistance is pretty much on, the, or the local resistance. If we can get above that, it's basically clear air till about 28k. So actually, we could get a little bit further, a bit of a fake out. Um, I would say something like that. And then it's uh, potentially game time. 
and when I say game time, I'm still expecting 15, 16k. So, yeah, and when it comes to ether, obviously it's got its, it's got all sorts going for it. But we have that big old resistance level over here, and just like what I've said with Bitcoin, um, yeah. We, we, we've got some space to move into here. So let's have a look at ETH on the lower time frames. You can see this is absolute mess. Um, absolute mess. So we've, a lot of these are unimportant now because obviously they're gone. Um, so let's get rid of that one. Let's keep that, let's keep that. This is now irrelevant. And yeah. So ETH has done exactly what I said. Um, <clears throat> now I haven't traded it as well as I'd liked. So although I drew this, you know, I drew this little arrow up here to sort of 18, 19, or 1900, back when we were here. And I was basically saying, look, we've got to get to, towards the top end of this, this structure over here. Um, and it did basically start to play out exactly other than this little bloody <clears throat> drop off over here. I did not see that coming. and that that played me like a fool so yeah I didn't see that and then I did and <laughs> I got played twice actually because I didn't see that coming um, and then it broke base support and koboed off it broke it koboed buggered off I was oh shit okay we're now probably seeing 1600 and then yeah so I've been sat in cash um, Basically, I bought a lot of ether around 1600 here off, off this bounce, um, and they're sold around somewhere around here. But um, yeah, so now we have that circle has already been filled. That I can get rid of. Now, what's going on over here? Basically, I think yeah, we've got a bit of a rising compression over here, so we could see something. You know, whether it goes down or up. Or, here but either way whatever happens whether it's up first or down first I reckon we've got you know some sort of movement into that sort of area over here now where is September the 16th September 16th is whoo all the way over here 16th September so let's draw a big line on 16th There we go. And I'll draw the 19th just in case it's delayed. That was the original. Oops. Yeah, so. We, yeah. It's weird because it, it looks like. I mean, looking at this sort of rising compression. Uh, if I have to run that correctly, yeah, we should see sort of movement around September early September time so we could actually see a bit of falling before the merge but hey ho I'm still fully expecting falling so just for clarification and I, and I, and I said it in telegram um, where is it let's find it nothing has changed from my clarification of biases if that makes sense uh, ba, 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 ba. Here we go. So after that little bit of an essay, I basically said, uh, "I'm bearish global economy, short term and medium term, so zero to eighteen months." Elon Musk, the world's best market caller, he always gets it right. He always sells personal stock, always before crashes, and also raises shitloads of money via corporate bonds uh, for Tesla before crashes. So al although he said he sold, you know, eight billion dollars worth of Tesla stock because of Twitter. And what may happen over there I, I call bullshit Elon I think you see the crash coming and you are exiting um, so you can buy more stock at lower prices the ultimate sidestepper um, so yeah he says that he's expecting a mild um, recession and don't forget he's got probably got more of an insight into inflation than anyone on the planet because just think of the sheer amount of resources and commodities and logistics that Tesla and SpaceX have to play with I mean, Tesla now has, I think he's, in the last well, 18 months, has made a million cars. Um, and his trajectory is growing. So here's the thing, one second. Uh, Tesla delivery history. Tesla history. 
and it's bound to be a chart which everyone ignores. Um, that's by quarter and by year. That's revenue. No, I oh, want deliveries, sales. It's one of these. Yeah. So look at that. This is almost a perfect uh, parabolic, you know, um, exponential growth curve over here, and it's out of date. That's 2019. That's out of date. 2021 sales deliveries yeah people have no idea what's coming uh, with with Tesla uh, what is that 2020 yeah and again it's, it's way higher now see look at this 2020 they had just hit a million vehicles and now 2022 they got another million um, they are growing ridiculously and it seems like analysts on Wall Street have are completely oblivious to all to all of this anyway so he's make, he made long story short i think he has a better uh, read on the market than than anyone else so i'm bullish on stocks and crypto ultra short term so zero to one month as i said i i personally think you know bear in mind this is the four hour chart now that bitcoin can sort of slug it up and caterpillar up to this point here around sort of september time and i think for september onwards it's like sort of game over once we enter that red band here I am getting super bearish. So here we go. Bearish stocks and crypto short term, one to three months. Super goddamn bullish for crypto, medium to long term, from any you know, three months forever. So nothing has changed there. Now, in terms of execution, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, right, do you go long now uh, and risk it for a biscuit? And go, right, let's say we were playing with Ether and go bearing in mind this is simply a bear market relief rally this is not the end this is not you know we're not going to, to the moon here uh, uh, and here's another thing we had like qe zero interest rates we had the risk was off big time and that is why you know with all that qe and stuff like that uh, over 2020 onwards we we had obviously massive rallying in stocks and and crypto etc we got none of that. We got like the opposite of this now. We got QT. We got in, you know, inflation supposedly eight point five percent, which is absolute bollocks. Um, the CP lie is literally the biggest lie ever. Um, and so, the you have to understand that they the market off the top of my head, they're expecting inflation to be something like nine percent. And then it was announced that it was eight point five percent. And so the market's like, holy shit, this is, inflation's gone. We have peak inflation, um, and so what will happen is, in come September time, uh, and so yes, yeah, so the market's obviously rallied hard on that. When you know, <laughs> we haven't even seen the beginning of inflation yet. We haven't seen the food tsunami shortage, of, or the opposite of a tsunami, um, the massive food supply um, crush that's going to hit Africa, uh, and all the oil, you know, all the ramification of what's happening right now. Um, and so comes sep you know September October time, you know. All it'll, all it'll take is, oh shit, we're now 9.5% official inflation. And then, you know, so, yeah. I think this is just a little relief rally before the, before the storm. So, from execution purpose, let's go to the 12 hour. Let's get rid of this. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Do you risk it to try and eke out? Let's say, let's just round it up let's say we're at nineteen hundred dollars right now okay I mean especially like I've if I wanted yeah let's say we're nineteen hundred dollars rounding up do you now risk going long to try and squeeze out maybe another hundred I think probably we you know a, there's a fair likelihood that we'll see two thousand dollar ETH I think that's 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 a fair likelihood so if you're looking to go long, in fact, let's look at this. So let's put in a trade, long position, to go long here. And let's say we're going to take profit around 2K, just to be safe. Where are you putting your stop? Probably put it just below that. Um, below the wick, which give it a bit of space. Um, again, it's not the best stop loss in the world because this is just within the normal range. Um, so really, if you're going to be absolutely safe with this, you'd have your stop loss down here at 1776, out basically outside of this um, 
this support here you don't want your stop loss in the noise where the market like because the market could very easily do this and caterpillar back onto this level before you know surging into that level there so you don't want your stop loss you know around here unless you're buying spot ETH, so you know you're literally going to buy the actual token um, and then you don't have to worry about liquidation prices um, but still yeah if you're gonna trade it on Bybit or whatever um, what is the risk to you know it's like look at that it's only, it's only 1.2 R it's not the best trade in the world so if you do do it you need to risk it a little bit less um, so that's that. Now here's the other thing, is when you're, obviously Bitcoin and Ether, you know, the, in fact look at this, it's literally bang on in the middle. Um, if you were to basically split up that, that that channel is literally right in the middle. Um, so you could e equally go either way um, in terms of probability. So there's not much upside here. So for example, if if Bitcoin were to, you know, make its way up to here, that's only 11%. Um, if if ETH does the same thing, that's really, let's say 2007, 12%, ugh, it's not that good. Whereas if you look at some of the, you know, the other ones, like let's look at the, you know, some of the smaller cap things. So, I mean, I like, I like the graph, GERT. I mean, I know it sounds pretty crazy, but just ha like how there was clear air, so I'm going to show you this, just like how I said there's clear air between Bitcoin from 25k to 28, there's literally, look back, there's basically no resistance in from 25k to 28, um, and then if it gets to 28, it'll probably f uh, spike up to 30. So let's say 25 to 30, there's clear air pretty much. Um, so from here to 30, let's say, oh no, let's, let's take that, that base, that's a 28, that's a 17.89% uh, rally. Well, with GERT, the graph, and stuff like this, I'm not saying to buy graph, I'm just saying that the next sort of um, real resistance for the graph is up here at 30 cents. So it's the same sort of play, but, but, this is much better. Look at that. That's, that's a doubling. That's a hundred and sixteen percent growth. So if Bitcoin does that, Ether will most likely do its thing. Don't forget, it's got its you know two point oh. That's you know helping that. So hell, we could see you know two two hundred maybe somewhere around that. But that's only seventeen percent from now. So I think the you're actually taking more of a risk um, at this um, stage you know place right now going into Bitcoin and ETH just because the triple R is just ridiculous. Now remember, this always changes, so don't quote me on this. Like back here, when we were dicking around 1,210, you know, and 1,000, I was damn right I was saying, you just I'm literally just touching Bitcoin and Ether right now because there was the real possibility that this was a bearish rectangle and this bearish rectangle could have easily played out like this and had another capitulation to 400. And if, let's say, we had another move to 400, there would have been loads of projects that would have gone bust, like the lower cap ones. So yes, around here, when we're re at relative lows, you, I'm only playing with Ether and Bitcoin and stuff because they have the less light risk of dying. Now, once we've, I mean, don't forget, we've had like 100% growth from eight, you know, $800 877 to so yeah about 100% here um, let's what is it exactly from low to where we are right now about 115% yeah um, but right now in this sort of little eek eeking of a basically we're just we're in a very low ceiling house and we're trying to decide can we do a backflip without smashing into the ceiling a uh, back somersault, sorry, not a backflip. You don't gain height with a backflip. Um, somersault, you do. So with the GERT, the GERT. So yeah, uh, let's let's do the same thing. What is the risk? Well, the, obviously the risk, pretty similar. Um, you know, back to these lows, it's sort of 39% drop, as in the all-time lows. And with ETH, if we drop to the all-time low from here, 
to that all time low is minus 50 odd percent. Look at that. So there's a 50 percent. So look at the risk to reward. You can either sit here and maybe at a maximum get about 20 percent more profit, but you're risking 50 percent drop. Or with GERT you could look at the odds of 116% growth and a 40% drop. Hmm, okay, from a trading perspective, I quite like that. Okay, let's say I'm wrong, it's not that one. And let's say it's this one here at 20 cents. Let's do the maths. You still got a 40% chance. Okay, so let's look at other good ones. Um, Gala Games, here we go. Games producers. Right where if Bitcoin does its thing and moves up where is the next real resistance where it's pretty much sat very closely to this one but I think the next one if Bitcoin does make it move back up there we're looking at sort of nine cents well let's look at the risk to reward again so we've got potential upside of 45 percent yeah okay not bad all-time low 28 percent still way better than Bitcoin and Ether right now um, Kusama is very much like Polkadot. Again, I think this is the level you need to look at. Let's extend that bad boy. So it doesn't look that good, but let's have a little play. Here to here, roughly is 50 odd percent. Here to all time lows, 24 percent. Much better. Um, ENS, that's already rocked hard. Hmm. Where is that gonna go? Again, very similar, like that. Nah, I'm not touching it. It's just too much, too too low headroom. Not touching Celsius or Luna. Um, Zili, yeah. All I'm trying to say is that I think. Let's have a look at Sol. Now there is hmm, it's tough. There is real resistance around here actually. But other than that, like if I think this is probably like they're very similar to the twenty five K level for Bitcoin. Because twenty five K is just above Bitcoin right now, and this is very similar. And then the twenty eight K level equivalent to for Solana is this $80 level here. So again, let's let's do that same shizzle. Um, we potentially have 100% upside, all time low, 37 downside. So hmm, I'm thinking of buying some. I'm not like I'm not going to be dicking around with you know page four of Coin Market Cap or whatever, but some of these others. Phantom again, Phantom. Look at this. Let's go in the daily chart actually. So, Phantom has real resistance somewhere around here. What is that? A dollar. Let's call it a dollar. Let's put it on the on the nose. Um, it's got two resistance levels over here, but even still, we're looking at maybe a run up to 154%. Or even 50% here. And then the downside, all time low, back to sort of 50. Yeah, it's one for one. Not ideal. Radium. Um, yeah, just a thought. Just a thought. Oh, yeah. Sorry, this is my, my last one. Sorry. <laughs> um, Cardano at 80 cents, really, is the next real resistance. Um, yeah, and that's a good 50 odd percent. Whereas on the downside, it's only 20. So we're looking at some 2R, yeah, at least some 2R trades over here. Uh, if you were to go, if you were deciding to go long, I just don't think it's wise to do that with Ether or Bitcoin just yet. It's just, yeah. But the first telltale sign that market's going to roll over, you need to get the hell out of all the other stuff. Uh, KYC and near and all these and, and link in fact everyone likes link it's definitely a level there and a little bit below it but just spitballing it I and mean, we've got a bit of a double bottom here 
So, yeah, 50% and 35, yeah, it's not ideal, but we'll see. Right, I think, yeah, 80 minutes condensed into 40 minutes. Um, hope that helps, and I will see you all soon. Toodles.